And we're continuing with the ninth chapter of the letter of the Witch in the Ring. Rose Rita is in the Sipes farmhouse, and her lies did not quite work on Mrs. Sipes. So she has not been able to get a hold of Uncle Jonathan yet. She has had to call her parents, who are coming to get her. And Mrs. Sipes has gone off to check out what's going on over at the Gunderson farm. And that's where we pick up from. What are we going to do now? She asked. I'm going to call up Lewis's Uncle Jonathan right away, quick. But if he doesn't know what to do about old Mrs. Bigger, then nobody does. Rosarita felt excited. She already imagined herself armed with a spell and confronting Mrs. Bigger. Rosarita went back to the front hall and picked up the telephone. She glanced nervously around to make sure none of the other Sipes kids were in earshot. None of them was. Aggie stood by Rose Rita, anxiously waiting, as she asked for the long-distance operator. I want New Zebedee, Michigan, number 865, please, operator. The residence of Mr. Jonathan Barnevelt. This is a collect call. Rose Rita and Aggie waited. They could hear the operator ringing Jonathan's phone. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Eight times she let it ring, and then she said in a sing-songy voice that Rose Rita knew so well, I'm sorry, but the party does not seem to answer. Would you care to call later? Yeah, said Rose Rita in a dull, hopeless voice. I'll call later. Thanks. She hung up the phone and sat down on the hassock next to the phone table. Gosh darn, she said angrily. Gosh darn it all. Now, now what are we going to do? Maybe they'll find Mrs. Zimmerman in the forest, said Aggie, hopefully. She was having trouble keeping Rose Rita's lies separate from the true story in her head. Rose Rita just looked at her. Well, try again, she muttered. We'll try again, she muttered. He's got to be home sometime. Rosarita tried three more times in ten minutes, but each time the result was the same. After a little while, Mrs. Sipes came back. She was beaming because she had found Mrs. Zimmerman's handbag on the kitchen table in Ole's house. And in the handbag, she had found Mrs. Zimmerman's driver's license, her car keys, and a lot of other identification. So now she was convinced that Rosarita was telling the whole truth. Rosarita was glad she was convinced. Now, if only Mrs. Sipes would go off to some far corner of her farm so she could try Jonathan's number again. But Mrs. Sipes stayed right at home the rest of the day. Rosarita swung on the front porch swing and played stickball with Aggie and helped her feed the cows and slop the hogs. When she wasn't doing anything else, Rosarita chewed her nails. Why wouldn't Mrs. Sipes leave? There was only one phone in the house, and since it was on a table in the front hall, it was hardly private. Mrs. Sipes was not the sort who would stand over Rosarita while she called, but she might be in the other room. And what would she do if she heard Rosarita asking Jonathan for a spell that would free Mrs. Zimmerman from Gert Bigger's enchantments? No, she wouldn't be alone to make a call like that. Rosarita knew it, and she waited for her chance, but her chance never came. That evening, as Rosarita and Aggie helped Mrs. Sipes get dinner ready, the phone rang. It was, Mr. P it was Mrs. Pottinger. It seemed their car had broken down on the road. Something had gone wrong with it. The differential, she thought it was. Whatever it was, they wouldn't be in till tomorrow morning. Was there any news about Mrs. Zimmerman? No, there wasn't. Mrs. Pottinger said they were sorry about the delay, but there was no help for it. They'd be there when they got the car running again. Rose Rita felt like a prisoner who had gotten a stay of execution. Now she would have more time to try to get, to get Uncle Jonathan. Oh, come... On, Uncle Jonathan, she prayed under her breath. Next time, be home. Please be home, please. Rosarita spent the evening playing Parcheesi and Michigan Rummy with Aggie and some of the other Sipes kids. Before she knew it, it was time for bed. She took a bath, which she badly needed, and put on a clean pair of pajamas from her valise, which Mrs. Sipes had brought back from the farmhouse. When Rosarita was all cleaned up, Mrs. Sipes told her that she was sleeping in the extra bed in Aggie's room. Aggie's room was all flouncy and frilly, and pink, a regular girl's room. There was a big teddy bear in the rocking chair in the corner, and there was a vanity table with a round mirror and some perfume bottles on it. Even though she was a farm girl and wore jeans a good deal of the time, Aggie seemed happy to be a girl. She said she looked forward to going to junior high and dates and dances and proms and stuff like that. She said it was a relief sometimes to get out of her jeans and boots that smelled of manure and go to a square dance at the 4-H building. Rosarita wondered if she would think that way herself in, a, in the fall. Meanwhile, she had other things on her mind. That night, Rosarita lay awake, listening to the sounds of the house. Her heart was beating fast, and she felt very nervous. The Sipes family went to bed at ten, and they had to be up at six in the morning to do chores. No exceptions were allowed, and considering the fact that there were eight children in the family, the house quieted down pretty fast. By 10.30, you could have heard a pin drop in the hall. 
Are you awake, Rosarita? Aggie hissed. Of course I'm awake, you dope. I'm going to go down in a few minutes and try my Uncle Jonathan's number again. Do you want me to go with you? No, it'd make too much noise for both of us to go. Just sit tight and wait. Okay. Minutes passed. When Rose Rita was finally sure that the house was asleep, she got out of bed and tiptoed downstairs to the telephone. There was a hall closet near the phone, and fortunately, the cord was long. Rose Rita took the phone into the closet, shut the door, and squatted there under the coats. Whispering as loudly as she dared, she asked for Jonathan's number again. Again, the operator tried. Ten times, fifteen, twenty times, it was no use. He was away, probably gone for the night. Rosarita hung up the phone and put it back on the table. She tiptoed back up the stairs to Aggie's room. How'd it go? No soap, Rosarita whispered. Maybe he's gone to visit his sister in OC5 Hills. He does that every now and then. I don't know her number. I don't even know what her name is. Oh gosh, what are we going to do? I don't know. Rosarita gripped her head with her hands and tried to think. If she could have shaken some thoughts out of her head, she would have done it. There had to be some way. There had to be... Aggie? Shh, not so loud. My ma'll hear us. Rosarita tried whispering more softly. Okay, I'm sorry. Hey, Aggie. Listen, does Mrs. Bigger live in her store? I mean, in back of it or upstairs? Nope. She lives about two miles down the road in a little house that sets way back from the road. How come you want to know that? Aggie, said Rosarita in a loud, excited whisper. How'd you like to help me break into Mrs. Bigger's store tonight? And that's the end of chapter nine.